Hello, my name is Felipe Gavilan and in this video, we are going to see how to pass a list of values to a store procedure. This may be useful when you don't know ahead of time how many values you want to pass to a store procedure. So in this video, we are going to make an Web API SP.NET Core 6 application to do that. Though I must say that this code, the code that we are going to do in this video, will work in any kind of c -sharp application, whether it is a console application, WinForm application, Blazor application, etc. We're just going to use a web API as an example. So let's get to work. So first, what we're going to do is that we're going to create a new database that we're going to use for this example. We're going to say pass list to a certain procedure and OK. And by the way, the code for this database and for this example that SP.NET Core 6 example is going to be in a GitHub repository in the description of this video. So let me first create a type which we are going to use for passing a table value parameter to our store procedure. So let me say here, create type, I'll call it integers list as table, and then I will define here a single column which is going to be of type int. So as you can see here, I am creating a custom table, a custom type that will allow me to use it as a parameter for my store procedure. So let me press F5. Now, if you want to see where this is stored, you can go to the Object Explorer, you can come to Programmability, you can go to Types and User Defined Table Types. And as you can see here, we have the integer list. So now let me create a table, which is the one that we're going to use as an example. It is going to be a simple table. So we're going to have two columns here. So let me say here value and n bar car 50. Now they are not going to be null and this is going to be a primary key. And now I want to specify that column as an identity. I'll just call it values. So let me now create a store procedure that is going to receive that table value parameter. So here I will say values get values and then I will put here the parameter. So the name of the parameter is going to be list IDs and the data type of the parameter is going to be that type that we created integers list. So let me paste that here and we are obligated to say here read only. This is mandatory. So you see that we have this red squiggly line here. If you don't like it, you can always press Ctrl Shift R because that will make the IntelliSense of SQL Server Management Studio to be updated. And now as you can see, we don't have the error here anymore. So now I can write a query in which we're going to say select everything from values where, and I think I need to put here brackets because values is a keyword in SQL Server, but that doesn't matter. So now I will say id in and then select id from list ids. And that's actually it. With this, we have created a query that will allow us to search for values in this table that we have here from this list of IDs that we're going to receive from a c -sharp application as a table value parameter. So let me press F5 to create the store procedure. And now let me come here. Let me go back to tables because I need to create some data. So edit top 200. And I will just say here value one, value two, value three, value four and value five. All right. So let me close this and let's continue. Now let me create my web API application. As I told you, this is just an example. You can use whatever .NET application you want, but we're just going to choose web API because it's the most simple. So let me say here, pass list to SP. All right, .NET 6, as you can see. So let me create. Now the first thing that we need to do is to install a Nugget package that will allow us to use ADA.NET here. So minus Nugget packages. Let me go to browse. The name of the package is Microsoft Data SQL Client. So Microsoft Data SQL Client. And let me install this. I'm using version 4.1. Accept. 
Then after that, I need to configure the connection string here in this configuration provider I've set into development.json. So let me say here, connection strings, default connection, and let me put a comma here, and let me put here server, in my case I can use dot, database, let's put the name of our database, which is pass list to SP, then integrated security, security equal to true. This means that we want to use our Windows credentials to authenticate in SQL Server. And finally, I will say here, trust server certificate equal to true, just in case, because sometimes my students get an error without this piece of data here. All right, so now I need to create a class that will allow me to put the data of the record of the values table in it. So I will just name this value. Actually, I wanted to create a folder. So entities, and now let me move this here because this is an entity, okay. And I will say here entities, all right, this is fine. So let me say here prop ID and a string text. All right, so as you can see, we created a value entity which will hold the ID and the text of the record of the table. So now all that's left is to create a new controller, which is going to be called values controller. And I will inherit from controller base, control dot, API controller and route API slash values. Now let me inject the I configuration because I need to be able to get a hold of the connection string. So connection string here equal to configuration, get connection string, default connection, which is the name that we gave to our connection string, default connection. And then let me come here and let's say control dot and I will initialize this as a field. So now I can create an endpoint. I'll call it HTTP get public action result of I enumerable of value control dot to import entities then get from query integer array IDs. These are the IDs that we're going to receive from our client. So now I will say here bar result equal to new list of value and then we're going to return that result and in the middle of those two lines I will put my a.net code which is the one that is going to invoke the extra procedure. So let me initialize a SQL connection. Of course you can put this behind an interface, behind a service, but this is not what this video is about so I will just put it here to keep things simple. So I will open the connection then I will say using SQL command command equal to new SQL command and here I will put the name of the store procedure so let me copy it from here and then I will pass the connection then I want to say command command type equal to a store procedure then I want to create a data table it is not mandatory to use a data table and we are going to make a video on how to do this without a data table in the future but for a small sets of data, like the ones that we are expected to receive here, a data table is just fine. So let me add a new data table. Let me import system.data. Then I will add a column to the data table of name ID and of type integer. And then after that, I will say for each, and then I will say ID IDs because I want to add a row for each ID in the IDs parameter that we're receiving here. So let me say add an ID. Then I want to configure the table value parameter. So I will say here parameter equal to command parameters add with value. And then here I will put the name of this parameter of the sort procedure that we have here and then comma the value which is the data table. After that, I will say parameter, SQL DB type, SQL DB type structured. Finally, 
we're going to use a reader. We're going to use a reader because we want to read the data that the store procedure returns to us. So I will say command execute reader while I will say while reader read and then I will say result at new value then id equal to in parse I will say reader id dot to a string and this symbol to signify that we understand that this is not going to be null and we're going to do the same for text equal to reader value dot to a string and this here and semicolon here and that should be it we should be good to go all right so let me press ctrl f5 to run our application so that we can make a test so let's come here let's go to values try it out i can say at integer i will say one three and five execute and you're going to see that we have id value one value three and value five excellent that means that indeed we are being able to pass a table value parameter to our store procedure and with that we're fetching data by their id and not only that but i'm not obligated to use three parameters i can just use two for example and let me say here four and then execute and you're going to see that it still works so i can pass an array of values to my store procedure, which means that I have a lot of flexibility with the amount of data that I pass to that store procedure. If you want to learn more about .NET and other technologies, please check out my Udemy courses today. You can find a link with discounts applied in the description of this video. Thank you.